Jesus, please take us from this grandstand world. It's time we got into the game. We're so tired of this grandstand world where feelings never seem to change. Welcome to another episode of Leaving the Grandstand World Live. I'm Vic Zarley and I'm happy to be able to talk to you and bring you a few ideas that well, may stimulate your spiritual walk a little bit. Today I have a couple of articles, things I want to read to you that I'm excited about. The first article I'd like to share with you is entitled, A Legion of demons. Today, there are a legion of demons ominously swirling about our heads, looking to enter them and wreak havoc, destroying our peace of mind. Swat them down as you would pesky insects. If you ponder them, if you even look at them, they become overpowering problems, insurmountable. Have you seen the monster bug under the microscope? If that was coming at you, you'd run like hell, away, fearing even to glance over your shoulder. Jesus healed a man possessed of a legion of demons, which is recorded at Luke 8.35 in the Bible. He exorcised them from him. He took his Holy Spirit demon swatter and prayerfully swung it, catapulting the demons back to hell. The insanity exited the man who was now sitting at the feet of Jesus. I know you are not naked and mad living in a cemetery as that man was, but today doesn't it sometimes feel like we are victims of our death-soaked environment, totally frightened of the circumstances portrayed on TV, radio, and the internet? 24-7? What can be done about it? Are we to be forever haunted by this world? Jesus said to be of good cheer, for I have overcome this world. Well, yay, Jesus. What about us? How can we be exorcised from these worldly ghosts that seem so real? How can we sit at the feet of Jesus and be protected by the peace emanating from his heart? How can we know, along with Jesus, a peace that transcends the world? We can do this by a change of focus, an acceptance of Jesus' way, truth, and life. We can overcome our death-soaked environment by relying on the one who promises and delivers abundant life, free from the thorns that prick us mercilessly, free from the ghosts of carnality and the pain they inflict. We will follow Jesus into his kingdom come. His will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The next article I want to read to you is entitled in the image and likeness of God. 
If God says in the Bible that we are made in the image and likeness of himself, why are we so resistant to the concept of our minds doing things? Drill down the concept of God gave each of us the ability to think and manifest things. Drill it down for yourself. What are you thinking and manifesting? Drill it down for us as a group and ask, what are we thinking and manifesting? You need only look around and see what we have accomplished in that arena. Quite a mess, isn't it? Drilling down can reveal many more results of us being endowed with powers given to us by God, revealed in the Bible under the idea that we are made in the image and likeness of God. For instance, look at what happens when we negatively assume something. A negative assumption given by a child of God endowed with God-like powers can cause devastating results that seem unwarranted and undeserved. Do you need an example? Preparing for war causes war. Why? Because though our intention is prevention, our actual godlike minds are manifesting fear, which is the reverse of faith, and consequently manifesting actual conflict. We need to remember that our minds do things, manifest our desires, the things we dwell on. If we dwell on things and label them fearful, we have set up conditions in which we believe that things are bad and God said, whatsoever we believe, we will receive. Another one is preparing for sickness. Drill that one down like I did preparing for war. It does not take a mathematical genius to conclude that our minds are powerful instruments given to us by God to use constructively, not destructively. What are we going to do with them? What have we done with them out of ignorance? Remember, to answer that question, all you need to do is look around you to see the results of our mass thinking and manifesting. This is not the kingdom of heaven, but the kingdom of heaven is within us, meaning that it is quietly and patiently awaiting our decisions to use our minds as God created them to be used. To manifest our heart's desire for peace, love, and all God's fruit of the Spirit. This is not done by setting up negative scenarios that manifest conflict and discouragement and failure. That is utilizing the tools that God gave us to sorrowfully spread fear and hopelessness. That is not practical in a godly sense in the least. Keep in mind that just because we do not understand the law of gravity, we still can trip and fall because of it. Just because we do not understand the nature of our minds, we can still misuse them and cause negative circumstances that seem unwarranted, 
if we step back and observe scientifically, we will come to understand that we are often victims of our own ignorance rather than people who have been cheated of a happy and constructive life. Let us use our minds in a constructive way. Say to the mountains looming in your life, Be gone! Be tossed into the sea! And, if you don't doubt in your heart, watch them sink from sight, never to haunt you again. This is being a responsible child of our Most High God, who gave us free will that we might learn to properly utilize his gifts of godlike power he has endowed each of us with. It is extremely important that we not attempt to use this explosive power by our own wits, but learn to rely on his Holy Spirit to guide us into full manifestation of the kingdom of God right here on earth as it is in heaven. So what I'd like to do to wrap up this wonderful session is share with you one of my hymn poems, old hymns that are coupled with music that I found on the internet that has been licensed in a way that allows us to use the music for our projects. Anyway, this is a brand new one made especially for leaving the grandstand world and I'd like to share it with you now. Thank you. Look forward to seeing you in the next episode. God bless you. Brethren, we have met to worship and adore the Lord our God. Will you pray with all your power while we try to preach the word? All is vain unless the Spirit of the Holy One comes down. Brethren, pray, and holy manna will be showered all around. Brethren, See poor sinners round you, slumbering on the brink of woe. Death is coming, hell is moving. Can you bear to let them go? See our fathers and our mothers and our children sinking down. Brethren, pray, and holy manna will be showered all around. Sisters. Will you join and help us? Moses' sister aided him. Will you help the trembling mourners who are struggling hard with sin? Tell them all about the Savior. Tell them that he will be found. Sisters pray and holy manna will be showered all around. Is there here a trembling jailer seeking grace and filled with tears? Is there here a weeping Mary pouring forth a flood of tears? Brethren, join your cries to help them. Sisters, let your prayers abound. Pray, oh pray that holy manna may be scattered all around. Let us love our God supremely. Let us love each other too. Let us love and pray for sinners till our God makes all things new. Then he'll call us home to heaven. At his table, we'll sit down. Christ will gird himself and serve us with sweet manna all around.